Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn algebra. Today is our day number 21. For those of you who have been watching these videos on a regular basis, you know uh, the schedule. On the first 20 days, day number 1 through 20, we learned how to evaluate algebraic expressions. We are done with that. Yesterday was the day number 20. Starting from today, we're going to learn, and for the next 10 days, 21 through 30, we're going to learn how to add and subtract simple algebraic expressions. In the beginning, it's going to be very simple, but as we go along higher higher in the days, they're going to be a little bit more complicated. Uh, as we approach day number 30, 27, 28, 29, they're going to get a little bit more complicated. But today, we're going to start out with something very simple, very straightforward, okay? Just give me one second. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here. I'll be right back in about five seconds. There you go. I'm back. Hold it. Here we go then. Day number 21. Adding and subtracting algebraic expressions. Find the sum of... So we're given some terms and we just have to find their sum. Number one. 3a, 5a, 7a, 2a. That's it. We just have to find their sum. And because they are all a's, uh, they are all like terms, so we just have to add them up. So 7 plus 3 is 10, and 5 plus 2 is 17, so it's just 17a. Now what would we have done if we had something like this? 3a plus 5b plus 7a plus 2b. In which case, we have to combine the like terms. We have to combine the like terms, so we have to combine the a's together. a's together, 3a plus 7a is 10a, and then combine the b's together, which is 5b, 5b plus 2b, which is 7b. Now, if you, understand, if you want to understand as to what we are doing here, why, what, what does it mean to combine the terms, you can understand that by taking a numerical example. Okay, watch what happens. You can convert this into a simple numerical example. Think of A's and B's in terms of numbers, because that's what they are. A's and B represent some numbers. We do not know how much A is, and we do not know how much B is, but if we did know it, it would look something like this. Say, for example, if we are told that A equals 5, and B equals, let's say, 3, then this is what we're looking at. Watch what happens. If we knew that part, which we don't, but if we knew it, it would be like this. 3 times A, which is 5, and then this guy is 5 times B, which is 3, and this guy is 7 times A, which is 5, and this guy is 2 times B, which is 3. Now what we do in algebra is, we combine the like terms. The like terms here are these. You see, these are, this is 5 and this is 5. So we have 3 5's. We have 3 5's and 7 5's. 3 5's and 7 5's make 10 5's. Voila! This is your 10. 3 5's. 3 5's and 7 5's make your 10 5's. 10, 10, 10 so we are done with these two. Now we look at these. Here we have 5 3's and here we have 2 3's. 5 3's and 2 3's should make 7 3's. There you go, 7 3's. You see? Now what, what I'm going to do now is to go back and replace these 5's and 3's with A's and B's. A is 5, so wherever is the 5, but not this 5. This 5 belongs to the coefficient of B. So here's your A, here's your A, and here is our B, and here is our B. So you see, 3 A's, 3 5's, and 7 5's made 10 5's, so there is your 10 A plus 3 B's and 2 B's makes 7 B's. Voila, there you go. In the first one, it was very simple because they were all A's. Let's do the next one. Let's do the next one, number 2. Well, actually, that was number 1 and 2, wasn't it? That, that one was number 1 and 2. Or should we keep it simple? Let's keep it simple. Let's go to number 2. Number 2. 
4 p, 3 p, 9 p, and 10 p. How many do we get when we add them up? How many p's are there? Well, p again is a number. For example, if I tell you, for example, for example, if we are told, if we are told that p equals 7, then we will have 4 times 7, 3 times 7, 9 times 7, and 10 times 7. And when you're adding up the terms, all you have to tell me is how many 7s there are. 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 plus 9 is 16, 16 plus 10 is 26. So we have 26, 7. The only difference is that we do not have 7s, so we have P's. P happened to be 7 here. See, that's 27, 26 7s. That's what it is. 4 plus 3 is 4 plus 3 is 7 P's, 7 plus 9 is 16, 16, 7 plus 9 is 16, 16 plus 10 is 26. Very good, 26. So the sum of this thing, sum of this thing is, in other words, if, since, we are asked to, since we are asked to find their sum, if we find their sum, and that turns out to be equal to, that turns out to be 26, 26 P. Very good. You see? That's what it is. That's what it is. 26 P. Because we do not know how much P is. I just made up the value. So this was, see? We do not know exactly in reality how, what P is. It's some variable. We do not know how much it is. So we have 4 P's. We have 3 P's. We have 9 P's. We have 10 P's. So how many P's do we have? 26 P's. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 9 would be 16. 16 plus 10 is 26. There you go. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. What would have happened? What would have happened if we had something like this? Instead of P's, all of the P's, we have Q's. So now we have 4P plus 3Q plus 9P plus 10Q. We have to combine the like terms. Like terms. Like means similar. Like. Like, not as in dislike, that's one meaning of the word like, I like you, I dislike you, I hate you. Not like as in dislike, but like as in unlike. Like here, like here is being used as a synonym of similar. Like here, when they talk about combining the like terms, the, the word like here is being used as a synonym of similar. And of course, antonym of like would be Antonym of similar would be dissimilar. Dissimilar. These are similar. But you cannot go around adding 4P and 3Qs. It does not work. It does not work. Let me give you a very simple example to make you understand. Let me give you some very simple example to make you understand. If I have four apples and three bananas, how much do I have? Well, I have four apples and three bananas. We cannot say seven apples or seven bananas because it's neither. It's the two unlike things. They are, two, they are two dissimilar things. But if I have nine more apples and ten more bananas, voila! Now, if you can tell me that if you tell me that in one plate I have three, in one plate we have four apples and three bananas, and in the other plate we have nine apples and ten bananas. Well, we have all together nine plus four, thirteen apples, and looks like 13 bananas what do you know well oh, this is spooky this is spooky there's too many lines going on here so I'm going to erase some of the lines here so, so you can see what we are adding so we have four apples and nine apples that gives us 13 apples and then we have three bananas and ten bananas so we have 13 bananas. That's all it is. That's what it means. Like terms and unlike terms. Apples and bananas, they are unlike things. We cannot add them. You cannot say how much it is. Uh, two apples and one banana. 
Two apples and one banana is two apples and one bananas. Do you understand? If I'm just trying to make you make you understand on a very intuitive level, on a, on a gut level, as to what it means to be like terms and unlike terms, because these are not apples and bananas, obviously. A's and B's are not apples and bananas, obviously. These are some numbers. A represents a number, and B represents a number. We do not know what those numbers are. So if I ask you how much is how much is three A plus five A, and we do not know what the hell A is, well, three A plus five A, whatever it is, is eight times that quantity, because we have three of these and five of these. So all together we have eight of these, eight A's, whatever A happens to be. So here, let's finish it up then. So for example here, for example here, let's do one again one more time, substituting the numbers. If if P is say four and Q is say ten, then what we have here is then what we have here is. 4 times P which is let's make it 5 so you can see so we do not confuse between this coefficient see when you have 3 A 3 is called this 3 is called coefficient and A is called the variable here the coefficient is the same as the value of the variable which is confusing 4 times 4 so let's give it a new value let's, let's pretend it's 5 so you can see it 4 times 5 and 9 times 5 because P is 5 you see P is 5 right here so we have if we have 4 if we have 4 5s and we get 9 more 5s if we have 4 5s and if we get 9 more 5s well we'll have 13 we'll have 13 5s similarly similarly if we get if we have three tens, three tens right here, that's what we're doing right now, Q is 10. If we have three tens and we get 10 more ten, oh, oh bloody hell, we have the same problem here. This 10 is same as the value of the thing, it's okay, don't. You understand that this, this is the coefficient, this is the value of the Q. So if we have three tens and 10 more tens, if we get, we'll have 13 tens. 13 tens, and that's your answer. So in terms of the variable, in terms of the variable, since p equals 5, so we have 13 p's plus 13 q's. Voila, that's your answer. 13 p's and 13 q's. That's all. I'm going to wrap it up at this point. We're going to come back and, 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 and do a few more problems tomorrow. Okay? So this, is, this, this is enough for today. I will see you tomorrow on day number 22. We'll do a few more examples. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, just go, go to any of these website addresses and send me an email. Or you can go to keshwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.